Hello everyone and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be doing an extreme makeover on this piece that my husband picked up from the side of the road. It had obviously been beat up and well loved and it is a type of wardrobe with a built in dresser on the side which I think is very unique. And the handles are glued and screwed on so I have to work with them. I'm going for a chinoiserie look or a ginger jar look for this piece and for this piece it is part of a challenge that we are doing as a group called the thrift flip road trip I'm doing this with these beautiful ladies here it is hosted by the crafting cousins and it features myself from desert DIY coffee with my sunshine Canterbury Cottage and Nicole North Gardens DIY channel we all have to do the color blue on our second hand flips and we also have to use fabric for each of our secondhand flips. The color I started off with was cobalt blue from Dixie Belle. The reason that I like to use Dixie Belle paint is not only because I like their paint, but their paint is zero VOC, which means that I can use it safely during my pregnancy. While you are watching this video, I am just about to hit my second trimester for my pregnancy, and I just want to make sure that the products that I'm using are safe for me and the baby, especially when I am painting indoors. And with this first coat of paint, I'm just trying to figure out if this is the right blue to match the fabric that I have picked out for this project. I'll show you the fabric in just a little bit, but it is something that I got from a friend secondhand to go along with our thrifted secondhand makeover for this challenge. I had originally planned to use some brushed gold bar handles that were going to go across the, almost the full length of each of these drawers. I ordered them from Amazon in bulk and they were extremely affordable and I will still link them in my Amazon store down below if you are interested in getting some very affordable gold long bar handles. But like I was saying earlier, these are glued and screwed on so I would have had to cut them off using power tools and it would have damaged the front of these drawers more than I wanted to have to fix. So I just worked with what I had and appreciated it for what it was. Here is the fabric that I chose to put on the sides. And unfortunately, it does not match this blue the way that I wanted it to. I adore this cobalt blue and it was gonna be such a big statement, but I'm gonna have to mix a custom color to go with this fabric a little better. I have this Dixie Belle paint here and then I have the Wise Owl paint in the color Nautilus. That was actually a gift from my friend Ashley over at Henson Home Furnishing. She's actually a um, seller of Wise Owl and she sent this to me uh, a long time ago and I finally have a project to use it on. And it is a little too dark so I'm going to mix this color with the cobalt blue to get just the perfect blue to match the fabric. I'm going to mix it directly into my paint sprayer because that just saves me an extra step. And since I am in the first trimester of my pregnancy, I am very tired and very nauseous. So I'm trying to save as much time as I can so that I can rest. But I'm just going to go ahead and put in all the rest of that cobalt blue because that tone is what I want, that beautiful jewelry cobalt tone. I just wanna darken it up a little bit with that Nautilus color. You can mix different chalk paints together as long as they are both water-based or if you are using oil paints, as long as they are both oil-based paints.
The next step that I'm going to do is add my clear coat to that paint. That is going to be a great way for me to not have to do clear coat afterwards. And I make sure to stir it in very well all the way to the bottom of my paint cup. I went inside to rest a little bit and my husband started putting up a sunshade for me. Isn't he so sweet? He did this without me asking and he's been helping like a saint throughout this pregnancy with all of my projects. When it comes to paint sprayers, I use the HVLP gun that is from Harbor Freight. It is about $20 or less depending on if it's on sale and I use a 20 gallon air compressor to run this paint sprayer. There are a lot of different things to learn about using a paint sprayer like this that is run by air and it is really something that you just need to buy and try it and practice yourself in order to understand. For me personally, I have to do it hands-on in order to learn it and I think that that is very true with learning to use a paint sprayer. It is not difficult, it just takes time and experience to get it right. Another important thing that I must point out if you are new here is that here at Desert DIY I always start my pieces upside down when painting. The main reason for this is to get good coverage for the bottom so that way you don't have the ground covering the surface that you need to spray or to hand paint if you don't have a sprayer. You want, you want to make sure that there's no areas that got missed because it was covered by the rug that you're painting on or if you're using a drop cloth it's just better to start it upside down and also you can flip it right side up and start painting the second coat right away. It was over a hundred degrees the day that I painted this piece and so when I say you can flip it right side up and start the second coat right away that is very true for the climate that I live in here in the desert so I didn't even have to wait for a dry time because it was already dry. There are days where when I'm spraying, the paint dries in the air before it even hits the piece of furniture and I have to water my paint down quite a bit when that happens. If you are in a more humid climate, you might have the opposite problem where the paint is too wet and drips. It was so hot that day that my gun actually burned my hand and I had to go and get a glove on for the next part. So now I have it flipped right side up and I'm going to finish with that last coat of paint and when you do um, top to bottom now you're getting your second coat of really good coverage on the rest of the piece that you painted upside down the first time. So then once I'm done with this right side up coat I'll be completely done painting the piece. And we brought it inside and I began to rest again so my husband took over with adding the fabric to the side panels of this wardrobe. At this point, I had already put on my pajamas and my slippers, and I am just the cameraman for the rest of this project. My husband so lovingly measured and cut out the perfect sized pieces for those side panels, although I must mention that it is a little bit difficult to measure exact measurements on fabric because it is a little bit stretchy of a material, unlike wood or anything else that is hard and solid where it's easier to measure exact measurements. So we did have to trim a little bit after we cut this off. We do a little bit of a dry fit before gluing it on as well just to make sure that it's the right size before we apply glue to the back of the fabric. In case you were wondering why his cheek is sticking out the way it is, it's because he had a lollipop the entire time he was doing this. My husband is from Mexico and he loves Mexican candy so that is what he was eating during the filming of the video although I can't complain because he was helping me out so I don't care. <laughs> Now that we have both side panels cut out, we are going to spray the back with Loctite spray adhesive. Loctite is my favorite brand to use for spray glues. And you can see my son sneaking by there in the backyard. I apologize for the mess. It has been difficult for me to get things done lately, as I have mentioned. But you wanna spray a really good 
thick coat of that spray glue and let it get a little bit tacky before applying it. The good thing about this glue is that if you don't get it right the first time you put it down, which is what happens to us, you can remove it and keep reapplying it for a little while before it loses its stickiness and before it sets. So we've set it down first this way and it looked like it was lining up all perfectly until the very bottom and we realized that it would be easier to just line it up to the bottom and then realign it to the top afterwards. We also needed to spray the edges again with some more of that spray glue because we did not thoroughly spray the edges the first time that we sprayed it. The final piece to this extreme makeover is this faux nail head trim. I buy mine from Walmart, although you can get it from Joann's Fabric. I have pre-cut a piece down here to fit to make sure that I line it up perfectly centered because these little circles make it to where it's not going to fit perfectly exactly the right size of the bottom of this piece. So I just wanna make sure that I'm lining it up centered and aligned to make it look as though it does fit perfectly. I'm going to apply it using hot glue. Hot glue is one of the best things that you can use to craft. I swear it is so versatile. And if you buy the Sure Bonder brand hot glue sticks, they are very, very strong glue compared to something that you could buy at the Dollar Tree or any other dollar store. I prefer that brand, and so that is why I'm recommending it to you guys. I'm using also a Sure Bonder hot glue gun, although you don't have to use that brand that I'm using. If you have a different brand one that works just fine, then go ahead and try out your gun. It'll do the same exact work as mine. And I'm just going to glue a little bit at a time as I'm working my way down. Here's that Sure Bonder glue. I wanna make sure that I'm not doing too big of a piece of glue because as you know, hot glue dries pretty quickly. So I don't want it to dry before I can set down these faux nail heads. As I am finishing up this nail head trim, I can't help but wonder what everybody else has made for their thrift flips. I have not seen anybody else's projects yet and I am so excited to see what they did. We are all very different YouTube channels and I might be the only one doing a furniture flip project. So I'm really excited to see what they do and I will have that playlist linked in my description box down below. So please check it out after my video. Remember what we started with? What a mess, but so much potential. And here is what we ended with. A magical transformation into a chinoiserie-inspired ginger jar-looking masterpiece. <laughs> I could stare at this fabric and that faux nail head trim all day long. It is so beautiful. This piece is going to be a gift to my cousin's wife. So I guess a cousin-in-law, is that what you would call it? but they have four beautiful children and we are also about to have four children and I thought that was kind of a neat coincidence that this piece was going to them. I'm not sure what her intentions are to use it for, but I hope she loves it for many, many years to come. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below to see more.